Yesterday I was ending uh, with the National X-ray Convention, which uh, the X-ray I had every year mm -hmm. in July. They had an annual uh, for the whole United States. And <clears throat> one year we went to uh, Delaware where the DuPont, DuPont uh, factories are, and we had our banquet in their dining room, and they had a ceiling that was, it looked like the sky, and they had a million stars in the sky. It was the most beautiful a uh, dining room I've ever seen. And when they turned the lights, bright lights out, and they turned the low lights on for dancing, it looked like there were stars in the sky. And it was the most beautiful place. And I said, why well, have it never been before? And why doesn't there anybody talk about it? Because <laughs> the DuPont people are not as... Uh, forward as the KD, as the uh, KDKA and uh, f uh, factory, they're always putting something on in one of their buildings to show place their handiwork. And I think that uh, everybody should do that because y you uh, see things that you don't expect to see. But that was one that I will always remember uh, because of the, it just looked like you were looking outdoors at the sky and all the stars were in the sky. Mm -hmm. It was the most beautiful uh, dance room, uh, auditorium and thing I ever saw. And of course there were others that were nice as like the one we went to in, in uh, 76 the anniversary of our country. And uh, they had fireworks, of course, like everybody does for Fourth of July. And uh, we rode a catamaran boat uh, for our evening tra uh, entertainment. And they had an orchestra and we danced in. And, and it, was, it was really wonderful. And other uh, annual conventions were in California, in uh, San Francisco. We went to one in San Francisco, and <laughs> I stayed in a hotel with four, in the 42nd floor, and I was nervous <laughs> all the time I was there. You had to go to 30-something. Uh, and cross over to another set of elevators. And I had just been on a convention and there were farmers there and they were saying, don't go above six floors in a building. <laughs> and all the time I was up there, it was, I said, now nah, I know they're not gonna have a fire. And somebody told me, he said, well now, how did you cross over? And I told them, they said, well, they can get a fire engine up there uh, to where you crossed over, and the ladders will go up to where you were. I said, yes, but uh, I'll be glad to get downstairs uh, because I don't like heights to begin with. And, uh, of course, that just added to my trauma. <laughs> so, but x-ray conventions were our were well, once a year, and they were all over the United States. And we were, uh, no, we went traveling to Seattle, Washington, uh, on a on a uh, alumni tour, and we uh, made a side trip to go to Alaska, but we got on the ship for Alaska and sat in the waiting room that has all the glass in it. And if you ever want to see sailors come out of the woodwork, when the storm started, the sailors in 
I've been five minutes that you just lobby with glass on, and they had both sides of that glass covered in less than five minutes. I bet there was a thousand uh, sailors, and they just come and that was so fast, it was over before you know it. So I never got to Alaska, but I saw what they do to protect you if you get there. <laughs> um, I think Tony remembers as a little boy when uh, Clemente was here, uh, when the t team was here playing, and it was a rainy, it was rained out. So the team came back to the hotel and got dressed up in their street clothes and went out visiting. <laughs> So I couldn't find uh, Clemente that night. But uh, some uh, of his buddies told me that he gets off the... I to say, you never know what people watch you, what you're doing. He gets off the elevator on the second floor and walks down to the basement. He doesn't go get up at the basement. He gets off on the second floor and walks down the stairway. So. In the morning, I got up and I went down to the bottom of the stairway, and uh, I saw him and I, he spoke, and and uh, then my brother started his first fan club, and he was supposed to have been in their wedding, but the t t team had a game out of town. He was going to be the best man in the wedding, and. Uh, he, uh, at this time, my brother had died, and so he came over and wanted to talk to me. Uh, after he said hello and signed the papers for everybody else, he came over and talked to me. And he says, oh, dear, tell me what happened to Sam. And I don't think I've got all the details. And uh, he was very cordial. And, very uh, concerned that he wasn't able to be here for his wedding or the funeral. And uh, so uh, I told him that he was quite pleased to hear. And then I did meet his mother and one of his brothers, don't ask me which one. And I brought the books and stuff home and gave them to Tony because he was a baseball fan. Oh, he was a gracious young man. I, that's the main thing I can say. He was a very gracious young man. Hmm. And he was very concerned about the, about Sam and his wife. And uh, I thought that was very nice of him to take the time away from the rest of the people to come and ask me about my brother. I think that was, showed the type of man he was. Mm. And yeah, you know, I heard, since I was talking about this to somebody, somebody said that they had already sent a ship full of food um, to the country, but it never got to where it was supposed to go. Right. And that's why he was gone. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't make it. No. And that's the sad part about it, that he, after he made the donation and and sent the stuff, that it, would, it uh, left the United States, but it didn't get to the place that it was supposed to be. Yeah. And that's the only reason he went. And then he didn't even get to do it. But he was, and I saw the movie that they made at Point Park calling, and his mother and one of his brothers was here for that movie. But he was, and he was well liked by all his teammates. Mm -hmm. uh, and all the publicity, they really were behind him. Mm -hmm. And But they don't know who, well I guess they do know, but they're not telling us who. Uh, damaged his plane. <coughs> mm. But I 
feel that he was a, he contributed much to football when he was here and even since he's been gone the works that he's done and played in that have done much for baseball mm -hmm. and they have now a uh, a uh, Clemente place out on Butler Street uh, where they have some of his romanto. I haven't been there yet uh, because they opened it after I got sick, but I am planning on going there this summer and seeing the place. It's an old foraging house that they turned into a memorial place. And they say it's really fixed up night. So if hmm. anybody's interested, they can go to Butler Street, where the 34th in Butler, I think, where that uh, soldier stands on top of a bank. Mm -hmm. And that's where Butler Street comes into Penn Avenue. And uh, that's where the fire house is on Butler Street. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be nice. Uh, it opened last year, but I wasn't able to go. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to make one of the first trips I go out in the summertime, in the spring, is going to be there to see that, because I want to see that. I'm a big American history and political buff. Uh -huh. I'm just amazed by some of the political and, uh, and historical places she's been. That's really uh -huh. excites me. Some of the, the presidential candidates, world leaders that she's met in her lifetime is just, some of those stories are just amazing. What's your favorite political person you've ever met? Politically? Yeah. McGovern. McGovern. Why don't you tell us about meeting McGovern? Oh, <laughs> well, I, they had, I had just came back from my an x-ray convention. And uh, McGovern was in Pittsburgh, and he was at the Carnegie Music Hall, and they had him up on the stage afterward uh, being introduced to people. And then they went over to the Webster Hall Hotel to serve uh, uh, some hors d'oeuvres. And uh, when I was over there, this man had a camera, and I didn't know he was a, a press photographer, but uh, I, I was watching him. Uh, I was trying to get in his picture, of course, and I was trying to watch him, uh, and I well, finally, I, uh, well, coming back from convention, I would be uh, hyper, and so I, walked over and I said to the picture taker, I said, uh, I don't know why, but every time I get close to him, you uh, put your camera down. I said, I'm not going to do anything to him. And he said, no, that's not it. He has a glass that has nothing but water in it. But every time I go to shoot a picture, he puts a glass to his mouth, and I'm not going to take his picture with him drinking because that's one photographer did that to somebody, and it was alcohol, and it made a mess out of uh, the evening. So I uh, went back uh, by McGovern, and when all the other people moved away, I said to him, a governor, uh, that gentleman over there wants to take your picture, but every time he goes to take it, you try to take a sip of your water, but he doesn't want to take your picture with you drinking, so I'll hold your glass behind you while he takes your picture. So I have the glass behind him, and I'm sitting beside him with a picture. <laughs> but that's the one thing that uh, I uh, 
it just happens that, you know, when you go to convention, you're in a, high, in a hyper state and carefree and whatnot. I, of course, I guess I would have done it anyhow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done it anyhow. She met De she's met Desmond Tutu? Yeah, oh, yeah. When he was here last year, he was at the... Um, the church oh now on in East Liberty across from across from the Catholic Church. Oh what I can't think of the name of the church. What's in the East Liberty Oh my anyway he was here for something and they had him over to that church to give a luncheon speech. And uh so I got in there and got my picture with him. <laughs> I just uh, I just walked over to the group and I had my camera in my hand and I said, "May I take your picture? May I take a picture with you?" And he graciously smiled and said, "I'd be honored." <laughs> so. That, that's the only excitement around that one, but he, he was very nice and, and he spoke very well and uh, he, was, he was a gracious man and he stood there and, and talked to people and answered some questions. And you know, some people, speakers, they'll just come off the platform and go in a side room and not have any connection with the audience. But he was gracious and, and stopped and talked to anybody that wanted to talk and take pictures of him. Mm -hmm. But that was really nice to see him. Mm -hmm. And now I'm trying to debate about whether he's the one that, but he's the one that was in jail, wasn't he? No, that was Mandela. That was Mandela. Huh? Mandela. That was Mandela. Oh, that, that's right. It was, that was Mandela. But he went through a whole lot, and uh, but he came out on top. He came out on top. Hmm. One of the things that that she left kind of left out of the story was she. I believe you have to understand that Aunt Kathy always has her camera with her whenever oh. she goes. She always <laughs> takes a camera with her. She always wants pictures, and if you go somewhere, you have to take pictures and bring them back. But when she met um, Bishop Tutu, she actually um, excused the mayor and told her to take her picture. The mayor of Pittsburgh took the picture of her. <laughs> she handed him the camera and said, here, you need to take the picture. She kind of left that out of the story. <laughs> what do I have to I remember, was it, was it, um... Calajiri? Was it Calajiri? Or was it... Maybe it might have been, because you... Yeah. We were friendly, and he used to yeah, come, so come to the house all the time to see my <laughs> husband. But uh, I, I say we're all human beings, and and we should uh, be cordial to one another. Uh, some people, when they get to get positions of honor or a head of a s organization, they think they're kings. And they're not. They they don't change anything. <laughs> there nothing changes about them. Only the name that people call them, and the ones they call them when they're not around are worse than the ones they call when they're there. Mm. But uh, I think that people need to learn to recognize uh, the culture side of people. Because that's the important thing that you can connect with some of the culture of what they uh, believe in and what they promote. And if you do that, then you will encourage them and you will encourage yourself too. Hmm. She's met people during the civil rights. Oh, I knew Martin Luther King. <laughs> 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 I know, she's just like, oh, I just, she's just... <laughs> uh, my uh, husband's from Atlanta, 
And we went to Atlanta in 38 for the first time. And I went to his church. And that day, his daddy preached. And uh, then uh, the next year, when I was there, he preached. And um, then uh, when my cousin graduated from Wilberforce High College, uh, the father got an honorary degree, and they had the lecture the day before graduation. And then um, the uh, son got an honorary degree, and he was the um, graduation speaker. And uh, but I had met them at church and at the meetings, and that so that I could uh, walk up to them in the group and say hello, and and we'd have a conversation going. <laughs> but uh, he was always a gracious man. Uh, King was. He he believed what he said, and he treated people decently. And he had a, a big. They had a big church, and uh, but he never got arrogant, you know. Or, acted beyond his means or something. He just acted like a Baptist minister. And his children were were lovely children. And uh, his mother and father were lovely people. And uh, at graduation, they were running around and telling all the dorms to keep their uh, doors Close uh, because there would be guards walking through the place because the kings were there, so there would be guards all over the place, and uh, and there were you couldn't go any place. Or somebody asked you where are you going or where are you coming from, but that was a tremendous affair when he gave that graduation speech, and and they had everybody. Now, they didn't come in. The father and son didn't come in the auditorium until everybody was seated. And then they came to the platform, and the father uh, did his bit, and then the son, and then they left. As soon as they finished, they left, and nobody could leave while they were leaving. That's why I was always so shocked when he got shot. I said, uh, it must have been meant to be, because all the other time he had so many guards around him. And this time he said he didn't want all that. But uh, he made his contribution, and I think it's still working to some degree. And I think I will always think of him as a wonderful uh, Baptist minister. Hmm. And he was head of a church that, and he lived by what he said, and he tried to get other people to do the same. And I think that was, that was really, the essence of his life is for people to realize that everybody is God's children. Mm. Everybody. Christian, Jews, Catholics, everybody. They're all God's children. Mm -hmm. They're just like uh, uh, my mom used to say, when you go to meet somebody at Kaufman's, that you, you set a time and then you be there at that time. And he was a person that would always make his meetings on time. And even when they were so much after him, he still went to the meeting. Mm. 
He said, it's my place to be there. If anybody gets goes, it's my time to be there, and I'm going. And he went, mm -hmm. and they respected him for it. Even the people that didn't like him respected him for that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what uh, every honorable man and woman should do. Not only talk something, but live it so people can know that it's really something that can be done. Hmm. And the kings proved that regardless to what obstacles were put in their way, they served God and their church. Hmm. And they did a wonderful, wonderful job. Yeah, well, we will talk about my um, last cruise was to uh, Sicily. That was my anniversary, my retirement gift from my husband. And we went to uh, Sicily and we had a, a wonderful cruise. And on Saturday, I was in the post office trying to buy stamps because I used to send stamp when, of course, now at this time, cards were 25 cents. And uh, then uh, the stamps were about 15 or 20 cents. But now the cards are 75 cents and the stamps, <laughs> or I don't know what the stamps are now. But it's ridiculous <laughs> to send postcards now when you have to pay a dollar, a quarter for the for the uh, stamp, and uh, seventy-five cent for a card, and it's the same thing. And they used to have in your hotel room a picture of your hotel on a postcard. They don't do that anymore. But their price is going up on their bills, but they don't give you all the paper stuff that they used to give you. Mm -hmm. I guess they cost too much money and they just don't do it. Uh, but I, uh, last summer I went somewhere and I wanted to buy postcards. And the person told me, uh, well, here's a nice one, 75 cents. I said, no, thank you. I'm not paying 75 cents for a car of, your, of the hotel I'm staying in. Mm -mm. Now, they used to give that one car to you, but they don't do that anymore. And I said, we have gotten so mercenary that uh, it's all a give me, give me, give me, give me. And people are going to have to stop back and quit buying things in order for them to come down. Because they're just, everything's going up, 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 up. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't feel as much as I like to send the, a card, I don't feel like pay, paying no uh, 25 cents to send a postcard and that costs 70 size cents. The card could be of their building and you, they should give it to you because that's the advertisement for them. So that's why when I go, so now I'll tell people, go to the stores, and get the store book. <laughs> you know, the books they have laying around in the store to advertise the uh, shoes or dress or something. That has the name of the store on it and the address and everything. That's just as good as a picture, a postcard, and then you can read about the, the uh, thing that you want to look at. But I think to pay 75 cents for a postcard that you used to pay 25 cents for is just ridiculous. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. And, and uh, the post office is going to lose because these, uh, uh, these, uh, <laughs> This modern uh, uh, way of doing things with these a a uh, things for the for the uh, 
what do you call your thing? I don't even know the, uh, for the, uh, for your uh, thing to contact people. They have, now they have the A thing that you can three people talk at one time, at one, and you can hear them all at once. Uh, uh, that's that's good, but you don't need all that communication. And I, I got that last year on my birthday. Uh, my one niece called from Washington. My dog. <laughs> huh? Yeah. And then uh, Sydney called from Baltimore. And then here was me, little girl, saying thank you down in the corner, a picture of me. And I said, these, uh, why can't I say the word? These, uh, what do you, huh? Uh, we had an iPad. And I said, now they're going too far now. <laughs> because they, they have all these computer things. That's it, I got the word there. <laughs> the computer things that are so uh, intriguing, but it still does away with people's privacy. The uh, things that I love about uh -huh. King Kathy is that she's a traveler, and she inspired me and my wife to do a lot of traveling to see as many states as we have. We went to Wisconsin this summer, and people ask why. It's because we've never been there, and you know. One of the things she brings out about computers and television is like everything's brought to us and we don't go out and discover things. And so now we've taken the opposite channel. Instead of watching things on the Discover channel, we're going places and discovering them for ourselves. And I think she's really been an inspiration for that. And I don't know what her favorite state, how many states she's been to. <laughs> she's been, I'd say out of 50, she's probably been to 48. But, <laughs> but I don't know how many states she's visited, but I know she's been to a lot of places throughout yeah, this country. I've been, been to a lot of them. I've been to a lot of them. And I thank God for the opportunity that uh, they gave me to to do that and and I hope that I made somebody's life more enjoyable by the things I've said and done because I think uh, life is a day-to-day -day thing and you have to live it and be honest and true and that's a way that you will enjoy it, but not trying to outdo somebody. That never works. That never works, because there's always somebody that can outdo you if you give them a chance. So you don't look for that. You look for being honest and true. Hmm. That's the most important thing about life, be honest and true. And as God says that if you pray sincerely believing in your prayer, then it will be answered. And there's nothing too hard for God to do. Mm. And that's what we ever remember. There's nothing too hard for God to do. If we just pray and ask him, believing he's going to answer your prayer, and he will.